In today's video, we're gonna cover how to make classic boom bap. I'm gonna show you tips on sound selection, arrangement tricks, drum pattern ideas, useful effects to get that classic sound, and a lot more. So let's get into it. To make this style of boom bap, we're gonna do things a bit differently. You might have listened to that beat from the intro and thought it uses samples, but that is where you're wrong. Oh, how wrong you are. To make this beat, I'm gonna be using a sound pack that I built called the Boom Bap Box. Oh, hey there, Boom Bap buddy. How'd you get in here? I thought I locked the front door. Ha <laughs> ha, I need to call the police. So I built this sound pack for, all right, you can leave now. As I was saying, this pack is specifically built for boom bap beats. Every single sound in it is 100% royalty free and 100% legal. So you can make beats, post them online, and never have to worry about any problems. The link to download it is in the description box below for those interested, or just go to boombapbox.com. But even if you don't want to download my pack, it's all good. I'll still show you some really helpful tips in this video, no matter what you use. So let's take this thing for a spin. My favorite folder in this pack is the Ear Candy folder. This is just meant to give you instant inspiration during any part of the beat making process. And as you can hear, these sounds have been processed and designed to instantly give your beats that boom bap feel. So let's start with this sound here. Now I'll show you a tip that you can use if you want to make these kinds of sounds yourself. First what I do is I start by grabbing a VST for pianos or keys, it's up to you. Here I'm going to use FL keys for the sake of this example, but I'd probably recommend something a bit better to be honest. Then just create a chord or a progression to your liking. After this, export your sound, and this is where you're going to start to redesign it. One really helpful tool that I like to use is formant shifting. You can do this by going into the stretch mode and then changing it to stretch pro. You'll see this formant fader pop up, and this can really help you recolor your sounds to give them a darker or brighter feel. Now, if you're not using FL Studio, you can download a free plugin called M Auto Pitch, which has a format knob that you can use to do the exact same thing. Another sound design trick that I like to do is change the sound so the focus becomes on the resonant. Let me show you what I mean. First, change the start time and cut the beginning off of your sound so all you have is the tail. Then normalize the sound, create an out, and start playing with the length. Depending on what start time you select, you can start to change the tone of the sound pretty drastically. From here, you can add your favorite distortion tool. For these old school beats, my personal favorite is Decimort. And that is how we go from this plain boring piano sound to something that's just more interesting here. It's a lot of work to do this though, which is exactly why I did this for you in my pack. So let's dive back into the ear candy folder and see what else is in here. Let's use this sound to introduce some musicality into our beat. All right, cool. Next, let's add in some low end into this beat. Tons of people always tell me they have trouble finding good bases for their boom bap beats. So if that's a problem that you struggle with, I designed these bases to help you solve this problem. I think this is a great starting foundation for our beat. And as you can see here, I didn't have to add any emulation effects to get these sounds to have that boom bap aesthetic. So next let's add in a melodic layer on top of this loop. I could add some bells or some keys, but for this beat, I'm gonna go into the folder of mallets here. And I have this one mallet sound here that I really like. So let's create a melodic pattern using this sound. Now I need to pay special attention here, and this is a tip that you can use when you wanna make boom bap beats too. I want to program this so it feels like it came from a sample. And to do this, I need to be detailed with what I do with the notes and with the pattern overall. Instead of having every note sit perfectly on grid, I'm gonna play around with the timing of these notes and have them off grid to a varying degree. And I'm also gonna control the velocity of these notes so it sounds humanized. 
Nothing too out of the ordinary here, but next I wanna show you another helpful trick so your patterns sound like they came from a sample by creating abrupt endings in this pattern. So you can hear at certain parts of this mallet loop, there are notes that will continue to play. Now this isn't a bad thing by any means, but what I can do instead is make this sound like I took different phrases from a sample, chopped them up, and I added those phrases into my beat. To do this, I'm gonna go into my mixer. I'll right click the volume fader and edit the events. Then I'm gonna create abrupt stops in this pattern where the volume completely drops using this automation. almost sounds like this pattern was chopped up from a sample and brought into my beat rather than something that I just played. Now this isn't a must do technique by any means, it's just a small aesthetic idea that you can use. Moving on, I'm going to add in my drums next to tie everything together. Let's dive into this folder of hi-hats here. I think this crispy hi-hat here would sound great for that classic boom bap feel. I did include sounds in this pack for more modern boom bap as well, and I'll probably do a video on that soon. But for this beat, let's use this hi-hat here. So here I created a repetitive hi-hat pattern that's pretty stiff and quantized. The reason I did this is because as you saw with the mallet pattern, it was really off grid. And so I don't wanna make too many sounds in my beat have that sloppy feel. This is something that I see some producers do where they'll take every single sound in their beat and they'll have zero sounds beyond time because they want that loose feel in their beat. But I personally do recommend trying this approach instead at times, having some sounds be on grid while others be off grid might be a better fit for your beat. Now after this, I'm gonna add a transient processor onto this hi-hat, I'm gonna crank up the release. The reason why this helps is because many of these hi-hats have a tail of static that I added onto them. So by cranking up that release, you can hear we really accentuate that static noise, which can help glue everything together. This is just a tip that you can use even if you don't download my pack. Next up, let's add a nice boom bap snare. Again, a mix of modern boom bap snares and classic ones. So let's just use this one here. I'm gonna add some slight reverb onto it and also layer this percussion from my pack underneath the snare so we get that nice classic boom bap snare here. Next up, I'm gonna throw in this kick and I'll be a little bit more free and loose with this pattern. So now the snares and the hi-hats are tight and on grid, so being off grid with my kicks will provide a nice balance, I feel. And now no classic boom bap beat can do without some beautiful sax riffs. I hired a saxophone player to create a bunch of different riffs for you to use inside this pack. And for these, I decided to keep them dry. I didn't add my own effects onto them. So you can design them to fit your particular style of beat that you're making. But if you want some general tips on how you can design sax riffs for boom bap beats, first I would recommend turning the envelope control on. That way you can control just how long you want each riff to last. And here is the effects chain that I used to get this boom bap feel. First, a simple delay. You can use a stock delay that comes with your DAW. Nothing fancy is required here. Second, constricting the frequencies with an EQ. If you use FL Studio, a good starting preset is the radio preset. And the reason why this frequency range works for boom bap beats is because often producers used to have to EQ out other instruments that were sitting around that sax in whatever sample they happened to be using. So this would end up making the sax sound a bit thin and unnatural, but that's actually the aesthetic that you want if you're making a boom bap beat. And this applies even if you use sax riffs from anywhere else, not just from my pack. So I think this is a great starting point for the beat here. Next, 
Next, let's move on to the arrangement. And this is where you can really start to do some cool stuff. One of the advantages of approaching a classic boom bap beat in this way by using one shots rather than samples is that you just have a lot more flexibility in your beat. If for example, this beat was just made up of one big sample and I just added drums on top, it would be a lot more limiting with the changes that I would be able to make during my arrangement. But now that I have far more control over each layer, we can make this beat sound far more dynamic. So let's start with a very basic intro here. Overall, I still do want to stick to using more simple arrangement techniques. Again, things like halftime or precise automation didn't exist back in the 90s, so sticking to simple arrangement ideas like focusing on creating drops can be more helpful to capture that more raw aesthetic from the 90s. So after eight bars of our beat, let's do a switch up and remove some of these sounds and patterns. Here, you're gonna notice that I minimize how much of that mallet pattern I used and I cut a portion out. Again, this not only opens up space for a verse section, but it also helps contribute to that sampled feel. It's as if I'm getting rid of a chop rather than going in and creating an entirely different pattern altogether to create differences in my arrangement. Again, I'm just sticking to very simple arrangement ideas here. Then after this, let's change our beat up. Let's reintroduce the full mallet pattern, but remove the first two layers. We'll also grab yet another horn riff and create something new in the next eight bars. We'll also create a drop by using some more sounds from the pack to get from one section to another here. So here we have this B section in our beat now. After this, I'll go back into the full hook section and reintroduce all the sounds and patterns back in their complete form and add in yet another horn riff. Again, this is why using one shots to make your beat can be so advantageous. It allows for more detailed arrangement ideas like this where it can easily swap, remove, and add patterns to keep the beat interesting. And it still maintains that classic boom bap aesthetic because it's almost like I'm just muting one layer from my drum machine. So we now have a classic boom bap beat on our hands thank you to my new sound pack, Boom Bap Box. If you want to download the pack, head over to boombapbox.com. I've added an option to get an expansion pack as well, which is what I used in this video. It's entirely up to you which one you want to grab. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a good day. See ya!